Welcome to the 65th episode of the Meeple Society, a podcast about board games hosted by two longtime role players turned avid board gamers. My name is Katie. I'm Greg. On this episode, we venture outside of the studio to record with two very special guests. With their help, we talk more about conventions, the reason we like them, and the things that turn us away. We continue the recaps of our collection videos, though only one episode today, episode 33. We discuss some of the ins, the one out, and the biggest surprise of that grouping. We answer another question from the mailbag, and finally, we break down the game of Earth. But before we get started... Yes, we are on location. Why are we on location? Well, because we're at our son and daughter-in-law's house, for one. We're recording a week early. Yes. Because next week when this we were supposed to be recording is when we would be on our way back from Geekway from the West. Geekway up to the West. Geekway from the West to the West, wherever in the West you want to go. <laughs> <laughs> also, we are actually recording too. Like I said in the one last video, they don't listen to me. They listen to you, so why listen now? Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> um, we're also recording the day we, we are recording the day before Mother's Day. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> I can't talk today. Happy birthday ha- to mothers out there. <laughs> yes, happy Mother's Day to all the moms, including the two with us, because you know, I mean, Jackie's a fur mom. Yeah. yeah. Fur, can we say fur baby mom? Is that better? <laughs> no, fur mom. That would just... Do we need little, to just as as like, say restart furries, this? That's a, no, 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 no. So let's introduce our guest. Wow. We have Justin, who's been on before, our oldest son, and Jackie. Hello. Hi. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> so they both they, they they both have their own podcasts. You guys want to talk about your podcast for a minute? You go first. <clears throat> oh. Uh <laughs> Do you know what your podcast is about? Yeah, I, my po- well, I don't I don't know what I would say it's about, but it's two tired therapists for those who would want to listen to it and it's me and my friend Kyle and we just talk about all things therapy and mental health, I guess. Yeah. With a twist. With a twist, yeah. yeah. Uh, Most of the time, it's, we're not talking about. It's more than therapy and <laughs> like mental opinions. health. It's 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 <laughs> it's interesting. A lot of opinions. It's more yes. twist than, than mental health. It's more <laughs> twist than mental health. Uh, they do talk a lot about like different movies and documentaries that yeah. are good. Um, if you're into the Twilight series, yeah. um, that was so That was awful, oh. but uh, it was it was definitely <laughs> that something. That was tough. That was tough. It was to definitely through. tough, but we are through it. Um, they talk about cults. Uh, this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Recent recording Upcoming as of episodes. today, actually, right before you guys got here, they recorded about a cult. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. And then, I mean, you guys do like, like fictional characters, <laughs> I guess, mm-hmm. except for me. Yeah, I, I, it just depends on what we like to do. Reddit stories are ones we like to do too. Yeah, y'all yeah, well, should break down The Simpsons. Oh. There you go, you would love that, I or, would. or King of the Hill. There you go. It was really progressive and ahead of its time. I'm just going to say that about King of the Hill. Let me get my Bobby Hill claw clip out of here and I can oh, wear it. <laughs> anyway. uh, my podcast is Once Upon a Sunday. Uh, well, one of my podcasts is Once Upon a Sunday, oh, where we talk about fantasy football. Mm-hmm. And then I have uh, the Marvel Timeline Rewatch, which is a podcast that just breaks down Marvel movies, TV shows, and yeah, yep. shorts. shorts. Um, we are currently on a break because the uh, Jacob is trying to do school, and it's really hard to do school and work and podcast and all sorts mm-hmm. of stuff all at the same time. So um, we're just taking a, a, a short little break, and then we're gonna start getting things through. I mean, we got to end game, and it was like, "Yep, yeah, we're good." And then we get past end game, and we're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> this is so much." <laughs> yeah. So we're yeah, we're well, hitting the we're hitting the fatigue on that on the MCU. So. We'll, uh, we'll well leave in, yeah. links in the bio for all those Absolutely. The podcasts and everything. So Absolutely. let's talk about the twenty four. Not a lot to talk about. No, but. we have one final meeting yet, and that's next week. Mm-hmm. So on our next podcast, we'll have have more information. Well, and then we have a production meeting. And, well, yeah. yeah, but that's kind of our final testing yeah. with mm-hmm. just the four of us. Yeah. So, and Doug. so yeah. if you don't know what we're talking about with the twenty four, it's a twenty four hour board game and video game marathon. We are. Pairing up with Co-op of Nerds this year on mm-hmm. June 7th and 8th. We're running from 8 p.m. on the 7th to 8 p.m. on the 8th. Yes. So uh, if you don't feel like watching us, I'm going to leave a link in the show notes of how to get to our page if you want to just donate, donate money for the mm-hmm. kids. This is all for the Miracle Children's Miracle Network and Extra Life. So. Yeah, it was. we had so much fun last year. Uh, there was just so much energy in the room in the whole mm-hmm. house there was so much energy in the house at the time 
Uh, I'm looking forward to it again this year. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So last week we talked about our gaming gaming conventions in the area mm-hmm. that was close to us. We thought about going, except for what was that Platypus Con? That's in Anchorage, Alaska. Yes. No, not Anchorage. No, it's in Juneau. 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 It's in Juneau. In January. I, I, I something. I want to go. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Uh-huh. Did not know they had one. <laughs> Is the capital of Alaska? Yes, I know that. Okay. I used yes. to live there. That's the only the like every time I hear Juno, I'm just I just have to say that. And Juneau? Jackie's always just like, "You're stupid." <laughs> I'm just thinking about Alaska in January. Is yeah, that'd be that's awful. A hard for me. <laughs> that's a, that's, <laughs> that's a hard no. And, and the bad thing about not that I don't Juneau, want to go, but I would not go. In y- you January. can't drive into Juno. You, you have, have to fly, fly in or you boat in. There yeah. is the and or again, dog sled. It's surrounded by mountains. <laughs> so yeah, Juno, yeah. mom. Okay, you can get into so L.A. Your grandmother, my, my mother, used to tell us that the roads went 20 miles outside of town and then just dead ended. Now that was in the 60s. We lived there. In, well, actually, I guess it was 70. We moved up there in 70. So that was you know 50 it's years like ago. Sim City. I want to pull. But from again, back now. I. It, it is just like Sim City, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it just ends. But yeah, last I heard, there was still no way to drive in. You mm-hmm. flew or you boated, and that's it. And you're pulling up a map, aren't you? Yeah, I, I want to see. Like, <laughs> has it changed since the 60s? I mean, why didn't you just type it in? You would have gotten there faster. Oh, anyway, shut up. You're just, just scrolling. <laughs> Juno's a lot smaller than I thought it was. Juno is very it's small. It's small. tiny. Oh, my yeah. God. And it's right down the southern part of Why Alaska. is this the capital? Like, for real. Like, why I, is this the capital? I have no idea. I, I have never understood why that was the capital. I'm sure there's Anchorage. a reason. I'm surprised it's not Fairbanks or Anchorage. It's easier to fly Actually, into than Anchorage. The area where Juno International Airport is bigger than Juno itself. itself. Yeah. <laughs> that would not surprise Anchorage, me. To fly bit. into Anchorage, you got to go through the mountains. I mean, you got mountains on both sides of your, yeah. as you're winding down well, through Anchorage the Well, Anchorage is right on the Gulf. Yes, and so, Anchorage's airport drops off into just, the bay. The roads just end, don't they? You drove for like 50 miles and it just ended. Yeah. yeah. You Glacier drive Highway just yeah. straight up ended. And yeah. like, they could have continued uh-huh. it. Well, maybe. There might be mountains no, there, there, or reasons you can't. No, but. if they just kept going along the water, they'd have been fine. Oh, well. <laughs> that Okay, well, this is not a geography podcast. So. <laughs> Even though we're going to anyway, talk about Earth today. But. Well, now I know, right? One of the conventions I forgot to mention, it was the one that I was actually looking at possibly going to. Maybe not this year. But I was going to say, I think we're, we're conned This year we're hitting Geekway. Next yep. year we can do this. This is actually in August. Okay. Yeah, August 30th through September 1st. And this is uh, Grand Con. It's up in Grand, Michi- Grand Michigan. Grand, Grand Rapids. Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. You which... do know that's about the same time frame as the Dice Tower Retreat, right? Yes, I know. Because this year that is the same week. But mm-hmm. I'm just saying. But it's one that's worth looking at. Okay. It, it's it's pretty big. It's in the convention center up there. You, you heard meeple, it here, you, folks. You need a Meeple Con. And maybe that's what we start calling Extra Life. It's Meeple, meeple Con. con. <gasps> it's not too late. That's doable. It's yeah. only two months away. <laughs> a month away. It's not too late. It's a month away. A Live month stream away. from MeepleCon. I can change things to make it MeepleCon. Interesting. Okay. So speaking of conventions, okay, we're going <laughs> to talk about <laughs> like that segue real quick. Okay. Anyway, we're going to talk about the good things, the bad things, and the ugly things about our con experiences. experiences. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to think of the words as I'm talking, and well, and let's sometimes start with they don't come out. What cons we've been to? Now, you and I have been to Gen Con a lot. We spent a few hours at Origins. We spent a few hours at Origins. We did not get to experience the whole con. No. We, and we've we been to Dice Tower West. Dice Tower West and, Hoosier, and con, Hoosier Con. Which is a very small local Indianapolis convention held over <laughs> Easter weekend. Very small. That's pretty – and then and then the retreat. Those are the only ones we've been to so far that we are planning mm-hmm. to expand those within yeah. the next couple of years. And you guys have been to Gen Con. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Any other non-board game related conventions that you can think of? No. No? Okay. No. I, didn't, I didn't think, I don't so, think so, but... Conventions? I don't think so. I would so. love to go to Dragon. I was going to say, I know she wants to go to Dragon. Oh, yeah. That's in L.A. or oh, London, okay. so it's... Well, it's it's it, the it's in L.A. Yeah. The U.K. There, drag con is yeah, there's in the U.K. UK. Drag. Uh, that's fine. I'd rather but yeah, go I know LA. you would like to go to the, the yeah. Drag Con in L.A. Yeah, it's actually probably happening soon, if not right now. <laughs> it's usually like... It's usually like <laughs> and it's L.A., so it's going to be like $4,000 to go. Maybe I should fly there, but... It's probably cheaper than going to London. Yeah. Yeah, but at least you get to go to a different country too. We'll sure. go one day. Anyway, so the good <laughs> anyway. things the good things about gaming convention, I would say being able to meet new people. Yes. And play games with them. Yes. 
you have almost every game publisher there represented yes. in some way or form because yeah. you know Asmodee owns almost everything. True. <laughs> anyway, so the good, like I said, so, good. meeting people. Demoing games. Demoing Did you guys get to games? demo a lot of games yeah. when you were there? Uh, I mean, no, not a lot. The first time we went, we did. We did. We played that fam. We played the Fantastic Beast, the dice yes. game. Yes, we did yes. do that one. Um, but it was well, pre-pandemic. I mean, we did the Marvel Splendor there. We demoed <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We did play. Um, that, we yeah. did a couple in the vendor hall. I mean, there were a yeah. couple that we like watched them demo it. Being to able to games. see the pieces and hold the pieces. Yeah. Prior to. I mean, we have that one board game maker that like we buy all of their stuff now because they actually taught us the game that like cultivate cultivate yeah, the one that does cultivate um oh, channel one or whatever i think yeah, is yeah. And you can, but now we're like super loyal to them so yeah yeah and you can meet stuff. designers the yeah. designers of these games that yeah it's kind of gotten to do that see a how times. like they're just regular people and mm -hmm. yeah you just know their names from all the games you've bought from them <laughs> <laughs> they're just like hello crazy person <laughs> right <laughs> Stefan Feld did not think I was a crazy person when we met him, just because I corrected him on how he was spelling your mom's name. Yes, he did. <laughs> it's yeah. a K, because he spelled it C-A-T-Y, and I said, it's a K, so he made the C look like a K. Oh, right. We'll have to show it to you. It's on yeah. Carpe Diem. Carpe, Carpe Diem, Diem, yeah. Box. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was funny. Anyway. But, so that's my favorite part, getting to, getting to mm -hmm. demo the games and meet people. Like, for instance, last year we were standing in line at, at to, I was standing in line to buy something. I don't remember. Well, I do remember what it was. I don't remember the name of the game right off the hand. But it was the uh, the upgrades for um, Dark Road. And I'm just standing there in line talking, and I'm talking to a lady who lives down in Greenwood. And we were talking about how crazy busy it was that year and you know, it was just fun to be able to talk to total strangers and find out we live ten miles away. Don't do that. She didn't yeah. have that life lesson when she was younger. Yeah. Don't talk to strangers. <laughs> You're right. Her dad was in the military, so you know, I yeah. You talk to too many strangers, you just move somewhere else in the country. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Everybody's a stranger. I'm really surprised that Gen Con hasn't like got a podcast area yet. Actually, There's so many board game podcasters there out there. Was one, was there was one year, set up year last year. Was it there last year? was one that was doing a live very podcast. Far yeah. Corner yeah. Of the dealer hall. I don't remember. But like, I'm surprised they don't that? do like a, a podcast meetup like, or yeah. yeah, where all the podcasters can go and like meet each other. That would be really Some cool. Some of the podcasters that come, they do actually do meetups for the fans of their show. Yeah. Yes. Like when the Secret Ball used to come to Gen Con, they had a meetup where they'd have it. Um, so, Rolling Dice and Taking Names does uh, a meetup at the old Spaghetti Factory. Blue Peg, Pink Peg has done it before. In yeah. Meeple Society, we'll be meeting at... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a few more fans. Kilroy's so. Bar and Grill. Right. That'd be Meridian. awesome. Now, maybe, eventually, someday. Right I mean, now, okay, I you guys have been to Vegas for, for a retreat and got noticed, so... We did get recognized at a retreat. Your dad got recognized yes. at a Speedway one day. A, a gas, gas station? station. Oh. Yes. Yes, the Speedway gas station. I'm just standing it wasn't in line. For this to... podcast, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, it was. Yeah, it I was, was standing at the gas station. It, it was the, sh the Speedway gas station over by Glendale Mall. Oh. And I was in line <laughs> to pay for a, uh, a drink. And the guy who's standing beside me, and I noticed he was staring at me. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with this what guy? He you? goes, Is your name Greg? I was like, going, No. 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 I just said, No. 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 I said, uh, No. Hard pass. Yeah, he goes like the Maple Society, Greg. Like, I was oh, like, hey. Going, <laughs> hey, friend. Yeah, <laughs> he goes, oh, we love you. I told my wife that's that's who you were. It's <laughs> like, okay, no, thanks. It, it, it was weird. Yeah, it it, it, it was kind of weird though. No, if if you it guys, was neat. If I you think guys that's exciting. Plan some kind of like event meetup. You could do it, like on a Saturday night or whatever. Yeah. As you meet people, you, like you hand them a card and be like, hey, we're like you're invited to this party or whatever, or this like meet up afterwards <laughs> well, and just go. meet people from the convention. And then that's how they start subscribing to this podcast and they subscribe to the YouTube channel and then they <laughs> give you yeah. money and then they subscribe to a Patreon in the future. And which is something we're looking at. If we get yeah. to a thousand, uh, we told ourselves when we get to a thousand on YouTube, we'll, subscribers on we'll YouTube, do yeah. the, we'll do Patreon. Okay. Bad things. I would say we have gotten Meeting totally people. off the rail here. <laughs> that's, um, that's okay, what it is. that's how this podcast Bad things. Is. The crowds. Yes. The crowds. Yep. For the sure. People. The crowds. The lines. The cost of food. 
uh, yeah, all the things that go along with a convention, no yeah. matter what the I mean, theme well, is. Well, the food, the cost of food in the convention for the quality of food that you get. That's why you yeah. go to the the, the trucks the outside. outside. Yeah. Then you gotta yes. deal with the heat. Yeah. Just yeah. go back inside. As soon as you yes. order, that's all. Air conditioned building. <laughs> you just walk day. back inside. <laughs> right. But there are lines at the, the uh, trucks. Oh, oh yeah. Last year it was a lot better. Last year they moved, they moved the it. trucks, yes, and I, I think it helped. Oh yeah, yeah they, they were over there. Between I think it was the, uh, a lot better. I think it was year. a lot better. Yeah. yeah, because they also they had tables and stuff. They didn't yes. do it in the street. They they did along the sidewalk. So if you wanted the other side, you had to go to the other side of it, yeah. and you weren't like everybody wasn't in the middle. Yeah, they mm-hmm. blocked off what so. was what is that South Street? They yeah, South between Street between the stadium yes. and it was the, right next uh, to Lucas Oil. Yes, yeah. they blocked off South Street, and then there's a huge parking lot right next to the convention center across from Lucas the Oil. The media parking. It's yeah, what? right. That's yeah, the media parking lot. Um, that uh, they had everything set up in there. It was Tables nice. and chairs and stuff. And, yep. yeah, yeah, it was nice. I was a good, yeah, they good had a, setup last year. They had more trucks, too. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they had a lot more trucks this time around. The only thing that sucked is that they had, like, <coughs> one bathroom for everyone yeah. outside. <laughs> yeah. And, it, like, when when we went, our uh, producer Jacob's uh, brother was with us, and he had to go to the bathroom after we he ordered went. food. And he went <laughs> inside, went all the way over to Lucas Oil, couldn't find the bathroom, went all the way back over, almost to the vendor hall, used the bathroom, came up, back and around, and we're like, there's a bathroom right Literally, there, 10 feet away yeah. from us. <laughs> we're like, where is it going? <laughs> we were like completely done eating at that point. He had not yeah. even started eating. Oh, no. That's the one good thing, though, in the convention center. There's a plenty of bathrooms. Oh, there's, and there's never really a long line anymore. No. So. I, I mean, I hear people talk about the long lines, especially in the women's restrooms, mm. but I don't think I've ever had a problem Mm-mm. when I've gone. Of course, right. I do know where all the upstairs ones are, and that helps. Right. We know so, where all the secret ones are, and that's yeah. where we yeah, go. Yeah, we've so. worked in there. So the bad Lucas would oil. be mostly the crowds? I, for me, yes. The crowds, the cost is a problem. <clears throat> I mean, Gen Con this year for a full four-day ticket was 143 Yeah, the cost is keeps going up. I want to say it was 143 I could be wrong. Okay. The ugly. I mean, that kind of goes right along with bad, don't you think? Yeah, well, I'm thinking the guys with the big backpacks. Oh God! That are, oh my God! That are beating you down the aisles I because mean, they're just swiveling and not looking to see if anyone's by, behind you. People and, that stop in an intersection. Yes. Yes. I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I stop in the intersection, I go right up against the trash can. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't right just stop. Because if you've never been to Gen Con, these aisles are are fairly wide. I mean, they're about but 10, 12 foot wide. Yeah, but there's so many people there that these yeah. aisles are really packed depending on what time of the day you're in there at. Yeah. Between that and then, I mean, it's gotten better for me at least, yeah. but I understand the odor. Uh, yeah. It's gotten better for you at least. Yeah. Okay. Again, for those that don't know, the man has no sense of smell. I have a little bit of a sense of smell. This got, <laughs> just got to be really strong. The big backpacks. The big backpacks yes. are a bad Hate thing. them. I get why people use them. I really do. Doesn't mean I have to like them. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they allow people to have backpacks. I, with I mean, all the security stuff. I'm really shocked. There's really no security. There is really. That's, and there's, there's very that's little what security I do not there. like. Is there's the, no security. The backpacks so. keep getting bigger. Yes. Well, they're just game bags you put on your back. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have some, but we we have we some that you them. have the ba- they have the backpack straps on them. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to carry them that way. No. But yeah. Yeah. So. What I is guess. what was the odor like? It just smells there, or like what was well, the? Sorry, I don't know if we ever like finished con- that. Gaming conventions are known for people that come to them but don't have a hotel room, so they sleep and they in just the convention sleep center. in the convention centers. I did, and they don't bathe. I did read like when I was I, when the first time I went, we got the like the thing of like what to do at Gen Con, and it was like take a shower, and I was like, yes. why? I said I turned to him, I was like, why is this a thing? And he was like, you'll understand. <laughs> Yes. And then when we went, I was like, no, I do get it. I didn't realize I didn't <laughs> yeah. stay. I didn't realize I didn't have a place to stay, though. Yeah, yeah. you're in a really close yeah, environment, it's, and yeah. there are people that just don't shower. They yeah. will they they have a convention and, center. Yeah. They'll, you'll see them in Because it's open 24-7, yes. so. Yeah. yeah, it's open all night during the convention, um, and people will just, in large groups, will camp out, and they'll take turns sleeping. Yeah, they'll, they'll be like they're playing a big game, and then you see two or three people laying beside them sleeping, and then they'll just walk throughout the night. And then, yeah, oh and that way security doesn't bother them. 
All right. Well, if you <laughs> get, if you can weed through all this whole conversation about kind, you'll know what the good things are, the bad things are, and the other things are on conventions. The only thing I can say is if you plan to be, I'd say Geekway, but by the time you hear this, we'll be back from that. But mm-hmm. if you plan to be at Gen Con and want to hang out, let us know. We will be happy to sit yeah. down for a game with you. Okay, so we are going to go into our ins and outs of a board game collection. Ins and outs. We're All right. We're only doing episode 33 yes. this time. We are only doing episode 33. We will save 34 for next week. And we weren't actually even going to do this, but there are games on here that you guys have played and actually can comment about. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, so episode 33 of Playing Through Our Collection. We played a total of, you know, I normally write this down. This was actually a small episode in comparison to previous. We only played 14 games on this one. That does not feel like correct but okay all right so we played a game called hacker tracker where you are playing essentially the fbi or something trying to track down hackers um unfortunately your fellow players are the other hackers you're trying to find uh we played hail to the chief hallertau hamlet a village building game lahav hawaii heat pedal to the metal halapagos it's only cooperative until the food runs out Mm -hmm. Uh, Hey Waiter, Hey That's My Fish, Hike, Home Improvement, yes, Home Improvement as in the... uh, Tim Taylor. Tim Taylor, yeah. Honey Buzz and Horrified American Monsters. All right, so those are the 14 that we played. Our ins and outs. All right, so... So you're going to start with your outs. Let's start with the out because we only had one leave the collection out of this entire mix, and that was Hacker Tracker. It was an interesting card game where everybody has one secret identity and then you have a number of clues and throughout the game you're basically uh, discarding a card and drawing a card or vice versa, I don't remember which one happens first, to collect sets to try to identify your fellow players and which hacker they are playing. It was an interesting concept but I don't think it quite, the gameplay itself didn't really live up to what I thought it could be. Yeah. Uh, and we've only played this like twice. We've only played it a couple long times, time yeah. We had it. So we did go ahead and, and let this one go. Now our ends is basically the other 13 games. We're only going <laughs> to preview a few of them, though. But we did end up keeping everything else we talked about. So um, we chose to talk about a few that both Justin and Jackie have played with us or have introduced us to, i.e. the first one. So let's start with Horrified American Monsters. Oh, I was like, like Hacker what? Tracker? No, what? No, I've never even heard of this. No, 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 no. <laughs> you guys had the original. Yeah, you and guys then got oh, me yeah. the American Monsters for Christmas because yes. it was on my list. Yep. And we have not gotten Did the we? Great God no. Great Monsters yet. We bought you. It was, a Christmas, it was a Christmas horrified present. American before Monster we show. bought horrified. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because okay. when we played it with you guys, we we're like, we have to go get that game, and then yeah. we got the Greek one yeah. too. Yeah. Now you yeah. got the Greek game. So between the, between all of us, we have all three of them that yeah. are currently out. Yeah. Okay. So horrified American monsters. This one plays cooperatively. Each person is playing somebody with asymmetric powers. Uh, that uh, you're you're basically moving around the board trying to trap various monsters and each game comes with what is it seven or eight different monsters you play with between two and three in the game depending on the complexity level you want the first time we ever played this we thought oh we're all experienced gamers we can do three (laughs) yeah we have yet to win this game (sighs) so have we ever won Yes, we have, we have one. Have one. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we've never. We've won only this won. Like we've once. only won as a two-player. We've never won with more than. Yeah. Two no, it gets harder and harder. It's, it's easier with two people to yeah. win it. We're gonna have to try that at one point. Just try it two-player. Because when when it. there's less people in between they your move action, less, that monster like they're not less. moving as much. Yeah. So like you're not stationary as much. Yeah, you're not stationary for so as long. So you're actually able to move around and get that around. Helps. And I imagine that would help a lot, actually. Yeah. So. All right, so the way this one plays, there are various items at each of the locations on the board. Each turn you are moving from location to location in an effort to either pick up items or trap monsters, potentially help civilians get back to where they need to be so they can be safe. You win the game if all three monsters or all both monsters, however you complex you decided to make it, mm-hmm. are captured before, what, somebody dies? I think it's... Uh, before you hit the like seventh, like there's a so death. Many rounds. There's oh, a there's skull. A death toll, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, we've never won this one. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on horrified? 
I liked it. That's why I wanted it. <laughs> okay. Short and simple. <laughs> well. <laughs> and apparently you guys liked it since you have bought two more since then. Yeah, it definitely changes, which is nice. Um, it yeah. doesn't change a lot of the game. I mean, it's still the same concept of the game, same monsters and everything. And that's why you come out with new new games with yes. new monsters yeah. new themes um the greek one is actually i think probably I think the, the yeah, better one I say, the greek one is a little bit better hmm. is it yeah. we haven't gotten to play that the one greek yet. one is actually kind of good okay yeah. i've heard it's, yeah mixed reviews on greek ones some people say it's the worst one some people said they really enjoyed I mean, it's it the so same it's the same game it's the same game yeah it's just yes. different things. the monsters are nice the, uh, monsters, like the, the monsters, monsters are different yeah. and there's a there's an added the the pickup tile thing where you have to like search remember Oh yeah, you have there's to. Like f- a, there's like an added component. To the yeah, Greek like one. you have to find like a specific. There's like different tiles. That yeah, you, that you have to pick up like a specific one, but there's they're all over. So you might go to the one on top of the board, but it might not be the one you need, and you have to like find. Because like in the first oh, two, you yeah, have nice. to send the monster to a specific yeah, area, or right. like you have to kill him. This now you have to like get the monster. Like you have to find where you're supposed to send that monster oh, to. Oh, so you don't oh, know. Yeah. Where like yeah. where where's okay. the gate to Hades yeah, or whatever yeah. for Hades oh, and stuff I think like that. that. Was one of the complaints because they said they had figure people had figured out how to incorporate the Hollywood monsters with the American monsters to kind of join them in one game, but there was no way to do the Greek, the yeah. Greek gods ones oh. or whatever it is. Yeah, probably because of that. Because of the gates. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I forgot it was called the gates, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah. I like it. I like that one better. I think we've won that one more. Uh, We 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 played it more than the other one at this point. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. I do like the I do like the uh, American one though. Why don't we've always talked about doing a comparison between the three? Yep. Maybe we were talking about around Halloween. Halloween time. Just do a horrified video. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. All right, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, the second game we are highlighting is Heat, Pedal to the Metal. Now, this one was a huge uh, hit last, well, earlier. No, it was last year. It was last year it came out. Uh, very hard to find. We got a chance to play it for the first time at Dice Tower Retreat, or no, Dice Tower West, mm-hmm. and almost immediately tried tracking it down. Uh, we did finally get our hands on a copy like, uh, sometime over the summer months. Okay, so the way this one plays, this is a racing game. This is uh, not NASCAR. Is it NASCAR? I don't know my differences. It's Formula racing. One. It's Formula, Formula one. one. Okay, thank you. See, I have no idea. I can't. I have no I clue. guess I didn't teach her right. Formula One and IndyCar are very similar, thank but you. this one is Formula One. Okay. It's more precision. I, was say, I know what NASCAR looks like. Formula, Formula one, one is one more like the actual, like, a lot more curves and turns and stuff. Which would be what this is. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Whereas Na- uh, IndyCar is just the loops. They do uh, courses They do well. road courses, too. NASCAR but... even does road courses. Well, I knew NASCAR did, but theirs actually look like real cars. They're stock cars, yeah. <laughs> Not – anyway, I digress. <laughs> All right, so mm-hmm. with Heat Pedal to the Metal – This is embarrassing is... for you considering I... where we live. I know, but I've always said I am not a, I have a, question. Not a race fan. Which one races the Indy 500? Do you know? That's IndyCars. And... It's kind of in the name, so and, yeah. yeah. And – the NASCARs do the um, the one in August. It's not in August well, anymore. Brickyard. Did they move it back to August? I'm not sure if they moved it back, but they actually did bring back. I know it was 400. Yeah. Yes. Which is nice. That I went to the road course that one year, and oh, it was awful. <laughs> That's it was why so they bad. Didn't draw it was so bad. Okay. Well, anyway, so heat pedal the metal Formula One racing. I learned something today. The game itself comes with a number of tracks, and I believe there's even a new board with two more tracks on it in the, the expansion, which more, we do not have. Yep. I, uh, but it so, adds rain to the mix. Yes. Ooh. So with this game, it is all play of the cards. Uh, what gear you were in determines how many cards you get to play. The cards range anywhere from the speedometer of zero up to five. Um, as well as some extra cards in there. There are stress cards where if you play a stress card in your hand, you can pull one card from the top of your deck. And it's kind of like a push your mech, push your mech, push your luck mechanism there. That's a new don't... mechanism. <laughs> push, 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 push your, your mech. mech. So, um, so you don't know what you're going to pull. It could put you over the line and thus cause you to take some heat. Hence the name of the game. Heat is that, heat is that card like any deck builder has that clogs down your hand the only way to get rid of it is to slow down and let your engine cool off a little bit so you have to be in first or second gear to get rid of them Um, but then you're only playing one or two cards and you're not going very far so 
it's a fine balance between when do you speed up and, and risk taking the heat or when do you slow down and try getting some of that stuff out of your hands, you can get more speedometer cards into your hand to play. I have to admit, this is the one racing game that we own, and we own quite a few, let me tell you, uh, that I actually really enjoy. I will definitely sit down and play this one. I've actually won this one once. You the, won it at Dice Tower West. I won it at Dice Tower West, the very first game we played. With a bunch of guys. <laughs> I did. I was, no, there was, there, was, there was another female in the game with us. Was there? Yes. Okay. I'd have to look up her name. I don't remember, but yes. <laughs> Anyhow. Anyway, so, um, are you done talking about heat? I am. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to <laughs> add anything. check. No, I didn't. You, you hit every part of it that I was okay. going to say, so. <laughs> okay. All right, the very last the way game. Goes. <laughs> <laughs> the looks. <laughs> the looks. See, that's why we need to do it in video so they can actually see these looks that she always I know. Does. I can't wait to get you guys on video podcasting. <laughs> the looks that she. Well, she does it in our top tens, too. Oh, so. yes, that's I fair. Do. Or our playing through our collections. All right, so the last game we are going to oh, highlight. Oh, we don't get to talk about Heat? Well, then talk I, about it. I don't it. have anything else. Heat's, really a, don't. Heat's like a top five game for okay. me, honestly. Like, this is probably one of my favorite games out there. Uh, thanks to. Jeff, when for the 24 hour last year, uh, we got to play it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we've played it a bunch. Uh, we actually got our friends to buy Heat also oh, she by has introducing to two copies. Now. Yeah. So they they bought it uh, <laughs> after we played it with them. Nice. Um, no, this is a game that I like a lot. I rarely lose, so that's probably also why I like it. Probably. It's one of those yeah. games like you can just flat out win mm -hmm. if you can just outthink everyone else. But it is, a, it is a game, though, if you drop behind, don't quit because you can easily come back. Changes. You can easily, you can easily come back. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. And I, I think the the cards actually do make sense with the heat. Like, mm -hmm. you can't discard them out of your hand. You have to you use them. You have to slow down. Because that's how cars work. Like yes. They don't just magically cool off after you play it, and it's nope. trying to ruin your hand, basically. Yep. And the push-your-luck cards... Eventually, you can't discard those either. You have to play them, and sometimes yeah. your mm -hmm. car just whoops and goes around and the corner. You slide too quickly. route through that. So yeah. Well, and see, and that's one thing I didn't mention. The corners all have a, for lack of speed a better limit. phrase, a speed limit. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And if you if you go through a corner that states the speed limit is five, and you go through it five, you're fine. But if you go but if you six, go through at six. Now you're take taking a heat, a heat mm -hmm. because you went through a little too quickly, or God forbid you push your luck right there and you, you pull a four and now you're going through it a 10 that's a problem or you miscalculate and you uh <laughs> need 11 spaces and you say i'm gonna go 11 spaces but then it's a two and then you accidentally go 12 and then you yeah. go 10 over and yeah, then that's yeah not good you die so it's <laughs> you die. <laughs> house rule <laughs> yeah your house rule so yeah i i very much enjoy this one i i enjoy trying to figure out how many cards can I legitimately play and get through that corner without having to slow down drastically? Yeah, without going have, to the first gear. Yeah. If yeah, if I can go through it in third gear, but I have you know two three two ones and a two in my hand. Well, in this I'm one, okay. you have to pay attention too because you're not just paying attention to what is this corner, what's the next corner, and yes. what's the corner after that. Because if it's three uh, a three a two and a two, yeah, maybe you do slow down to second gear. Yeah, but if it's a three, two, and a ten. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to fire up as quickly as I can yes. go. Mm -hmm. You save those low cards for when you can get through that corner, still doing third gear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now, I really enjoy the the play of this one. So, right. all right, the okay. last one we're going to talk about that we kept is a game called Jalapagos. The tagline on this is "It's cooperative until the food runs out." <laughs> and that's true. It is very true. That's very true. So. But has Jack, have you yeah. played it? Yeah. Okay. We own it. Oh, we that's right. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We played, Actually, we did a big 10 not. player game of this on 4th of July one year. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was holding the gun until the very end and they killed us and then got off right. the island. We what? Have, no, what? I don't think that was that her. Was well, she's done it before, so. <laughs> <laughs> she's done it before. She's, <laughs> she's, done it before. Done it before she's ruthless. Uh, yes. We have played this one on New Year's. I think the most memorable game for me was New Year's Eve in a blackout. Mm -hmm. We played this one. We've had so many memorable plays of this one. Um, but, yeah, we played a New Year's Eve in a blackout. We had lanterns set up in the middle of the table so we could see our cards. 
Um, and what was it? Well, it wasn't lanterns. It was water bottles set together yes. and our phone set on it and to the water light. would reflect yes. the light out it was really weird it's very smart it was <laughs> hey it worked it worked yeah that was an interesting new year's oh, the, these ones this one was good i think we've done a playthrough before where it's like oh we have all but one water I, oh i have a water bottle i'm like nope i do now and then shoots you and then takes the water <laughs> from you oh my gosh we, yes cause, okay so the way this game plays real quick synopsis uh um, shipwrecked everybody's shipwrecked you have – there is a shipwreck off the, the coast where you can go out and look for equipment cards. Uh, you may end up with good stuff like, you know, a canteen water or water yeah. or a fishing pole. But then again, you could end up with somebody's car keys that are doing you no good on this deserted island. Or, <laughs> or dirty underwear. <laughs> yes, that is one of the cards. It is a group effort to try to get enough food to survive each day. You have to have one food for each person on the island. And one water. Uh, and one water for each person on the island. You get food by going fishing. You get water by gathering the rain. So you have to take advantage of the days that it's going to rain because there are multiple cards in the deck that there's no rain coming. So you've got to be prepared for those. You're also looking for wood in order to build rafts. Each person needs a specific, you need basically one raft card for each person on the island to get off, of, to get off safely. We've never gotten everybody off safely. I don't think it's possible. So, all right, as the game progresses, you're going to find that you are short of food or water. And that's when votes start happening. So, and it usually takes till about the third day when this happens. Yeah. No, it's never right away. It's no. Like, it's like no. You usually get through the first few yeah, days, and it's, it, like, it's yeah. very misleading because you think you're doing great, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then suddenly you're not. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you've been voted off the island. Yeah. Exactly. And then that one person goes out to look in the ship, and then uh -huh. it just goes down. It goes downhill from there. from there, yes. When it comes down to the end of the day, you have to vote somebody off. That's when you're technically deciding who's not eating or who's not drinking that day, and that person is essentially voted off the island. Who does everybody Here's hate where it gets weird. Who has screwed up everyone? Yes. Yeah. So in the, the shipwreck cards, there are guns, there are shields. Shields, there are bullets. I remember playing one with a group from work where um, somebody had a, <laughs> somebody had a gun and a uh, a bullet went to shoot Chrissy. Chrissy had a shield, it ricocheted and hit me instead. Mm -hmm. It was just hysterical. I mean, it couldn't have been planned any better. It was so well, funny. Well, there was the, the very end. I was like, I'm going to make it off because I had food and water. Yes. So I was like, I'm good. I have my own food and water. And, and one of your co-workers looks at you and goes, can I shoot him now? And he does and takes my food and water. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> Oh my gosh! It's like your yes, life. we've <laughs> right. shoot them now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we've had some great plays of this one. Uh, I think it definitely is one of those games that you have to have the right frame of mind going in because yeah. it is a take. It, it turns into a take that game. Mm -hmm. You find out who your real friends are, <laughs> right? All right. So anyway, that is Halapagos. Uh, very fun, starts cooperative type of game. All right, so our surprise of this episode. We had one game that going in, we fully expected it to be, well, this game came out in what, the 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. something we, like we, that? We found it at a Goodwill. We so found we it at a Goodwill. We weren't expecting anything out of it. It looked like something that was coming out of the 60s, but I think it was mm -hmm. actually published after that. This is Hail to the Chief. <laughs> <laughs> this game this game is ridiculous we've played this twice now right yeah we've yes. played it twice yes all right so hail to the chief is two parts first of all you have the outside ring of the board which is essentially trivia you have to get so many points from these trivia questions that you can now venture into the inside of the game that you have basically been oh what's the phrasing um you're on the campaign you've trail. Got the ele you've got the like election. You're collecting delegates or yes. something. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've actually been nominated now. You can actually start the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to get through the trivia part of it in order to get enough of yeah. the, the votes to get in there. So then you start into the intersection of the board, which is a giant map of the U.S. Um, outlined with all the, the capital cities in each state and how many electoral votes each state has. You need so many votes to win. You have to end up in the D.C. area with those votes in order to win. 
And again, it's still trivia at this point. You're just going from state to state now instead of around the outside of the board. Mm -hmm. This was, it was more fun than I expected it to be. Yeah. So I looked it up. It was from 1987. Okay. It was 80s. And the outside of the board was called the convention. Okay. And then the inside of the board was the campaign. Yes. The campaign trail. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense the Republican and Democratic conventions. Mm-hmm. And yeah, campaigns. that makes total sense. Okay. So I I enjoyed it. I didn't expect to, mm-hmm. but I actually enjoyed this one. Yeah. You have to get well, so many points to actually get into the inside of the board, to, too. Yeah, so you have, you have to, to get like 50, 50 points. So you have to points. collect so many delegates right. yeah. before yeah. you win. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and on the outside, you're ask, you're answering questions about the presidents, and I think That's it took right. like three or four turns it's before not, you realized. It's wait, like general, like the US. presidents it's are all general listed US in or, Yeah, the presidents are all listed. Yeah, it's like the board. who was after Woodrow Wilson? <laughs> We're all look at the board. There Where's Woodrow order. Wilson? Okay. <laughs> But yeah, and then once you're inside the uh, campaign, so I'm looking at the rule book. They right? also had the easy questions and the hard questions, too. Yes. And then we started yes. with the hard questions. We're like, what yeah, in the world? There was four levels <laughs> yes. of difficulty yeah. on these, so there's a wide variety. I mean, if somebody knew a lot about it, they could answer yeah. the harder questions yeah. if they want, though. But yeah, the inside was all geography and, and, fi- and about the 50 states. Yes. I I enjoy it. I like, I like trivia games that... The answers never change. That mm-hmm. don't become dated in some fashion. History is history. You mm-hmm. can't change history. As long as it's not like, who was the last president to do this? Because like, that well. changes. Yes. No. It's then you have to look. Okay, when was this game made again? Exactly. And I, those are the kinds I don't like when you have to, when you have to take into account the the year of the game. Yeah. That becomes a problem. So. But yeah, I very much enjoyed this one. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's silly. It's silly. I mean, it really is silly. Yeah. And you kind of it's, it's just funny because you also have to land like exactly on the space to get into the U.S. Yes, which is what Greg struggled with the last time we played because he could he not couldn't land. get into the board. Yeah. So all of us were in, and we were like, we all had like <laughs> ten delegates like, already, and he was like, I can't yeah. even get into the campaign. Yeah, trail. like you have to, you have to get exactly on the space, or you have to like, it's all four you can't quarters, like you can't but... like yeah you have to like get enough but. I yeah. forget what it is. There's a specific rule about how you get into the U.S., but yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I won so. the first one, but Justin won the second one. The second time we played it. Okay. And I'm looking yeah. at this. And there's a strategy to it, because you do have to end the back up into D.C., so yeah. like all the bigger states are out west where you get a yeah. lot more points, mm-hmm. but if you just collect but. a couple in the in, on the East Coast and just go to D.C., then... Yeah. Well, it all yep. depends on where you enter from. Yeah, yeah. If you That's enter from too. the top right corner or the top left corner, you're coming in through Alaska. Yeah. So, you know, it all depends on where you're able to enter the states from, and then you just have to work your way across. Mm-hmm. So, but anyway, okay. yeah, good good game. We were very surprised that we actually enjoyed it. All right, and we had one disappointment on this episode. Um, this is... Lahav. All right, so the game the is Lahav. Yes, the game is Lahav. Translates the harbor. Why it's in the H's. This was... This is an Uwe Rosenberg game. Yeah, and it was... Tom Vassell praised this game. Yes. This was like his all-time favorite game oh, for a for long time. For a very time. long time. So I was like, oh, this... this I'll take his word. I usually trust what he says and just... I don't know if it's... It for me. Tom Vassell, if you're listening, skip about two minutes. Not the Tom <laughs> Vassell slander on this podcast. <laughs> eh, we, we agree on mo- most games. Most of the, we yes, did not. most of the games, we we totally agree with his opinion on a lot of the games that he reviews. This one, I don't know if it's just because it is an older Uwe game when it came out. Yeah. It came out a while back before a lot of the newer stuff. So it, it, it is a dated game in my opinion. So the way this one plays, though, everybody is operating one ship, and you literally – well, no, I take that back. Everybody has their own ship tokens. There's one track with seven spaces on it. The round ends when somebody gets to the last space in the track. Mm-hmm. But in order to move, you literally are just hopping over everybody and going to the next space and then hopping. So you're, you're playing leapfrog. So in a two-player game, which is the only way we've ever played this – one person's getting four turns per round, one person's getting three per round, then the next time it flips. In a three- or four-player game, you're going to have somebody who only gets one turn per round. Yeah, and, and each spot's giving you resources. Each spot and... is giving you resources. You can. It's a tableau builder where you are building out cards that could potentially give other actions. Mm-hmm. 
so I can see where it is interesting to me. It is very fiddly because each round you're putting more resources on the board and it's just little cardboard mm. chips. I just feel like it's too fiddly for me. Yes. It's there, still in our collection. Though. It is still in our collection. I don't know for how long. Yeah. It might end up in the other collection at one point. Yep. But, this was yeah. This just from 2008. Okay. So it is an older game, like I figured. Um, I don't know. I it just, it wasn't what I was hoping for with the rave reviews we'd heard about it. Okay. I'll leave it at that. All right. <clears throat> that is the end of our ins and outs. We will hit episodes 34 and 35 next time. So we're going to jump into the mailbag. And actually, this one did not come from our mail. This nope. came from a guy I work with. Yeah. His question was, how do I introduce new people to board games? Slowly. I, slowly. Slowly. Yeah. Well, your brother, all your brother did to introduce really into the board game hobby was so, let us play Pandemic. Yeah, he introduced us to Pandemic, and that was that. Was that. Mm -hmm. As they say, the rest is history. Yeah, and we still have that game. We do. Well, no. Well, no, they we have, have that, that You guys game. have our original yep. copy. Yeah, because I wanted the acrylic cubes because all of the expansions came with acrylic cubes. And, and we had the one with the wooden I had cubes. The, yeah, I had the original <laughs> we the wooden cubes. We have the OG. So. Yes, yep. you do. Yeah, the one that got him into it. I don't think I heard. Oh, we've played it once, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think we played it one time, right when the pandemic started. Perfect time. And we were like, this is probably not good. It's a little too yeah, on the nose right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, a lot of games like that kind of went, people were like, oh, you shouldn't play that game now. It was that, and then there's... Um, Plague. Plague. Plague Inc. Yeah. And then there was a game called Virus that just came out in 2019, I believe. And I wonder if there's a Last of Us board game. I doubt it. I, I would it. I wouldn't be surprised though actually. I doubt it. With the we'll I mean with the board with the video game itself the popularity of that and then the TV show that came out, like, you might as well just capitalize on it. Yes, twenty twenty four. Boom. The last this year. Now mind you, it does not even have a rating yeah. yet, so it's probably so it's, not actually out yet. Right. Yeah. So but it's coming. It says try to survive the post apocalyptic United States. It'll probably be at Gen Con. Interesting. If not Gen Con, then. Um, well, if it says United States, yeah, probably it'll probably release at Gen Con then. Yeah. I was thinking... Well, uh, post-apocalyptic world oh. in the United States, because that's where... Simon is releasing oh. it. Oh, well, that's interesting. $75. Ooh. I don't know if that's what they're looking at. I it kind of looks like a, a deck I don't know if that's, I, I don't I know, know if that's what it is. is the same one? Let me see this is Escape the Dark. Oh. I don't know if that's the same one. I just, I just Googled it, and the, that was the first thing that came up. I don't it know has no stats on it yeah. yet. Because it doesn't tell me the mechanisms or nothing. Hmm. Interesting. Or even the designer. It just says that Simon's bringing it out. That would be interesting, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're checking out when it comes out. There's three ratings already. See, that's not even possible. Right? I don't it's like that. Not even that Nobody knows anything. There, one has a 10, one has a 1, and the other one's a 10. And the, the last 10 says balance out the low rating. And the other one says balance out the high ratings. So, how do you get people into board games? Yes. <laughs> that's where we got. Yes, from that's this. where we are at. How do... Okay. So, typically, the and, and we've tried introducing several work friends to games. During the pandemic, we had a, a game night with several people at work because I, I was in office mm -hmm. during the pandemic. We were all our, our team was split in half. So, to, I don't know, just to give us some uh, something outside of work. We had a game night for our to half get rid of the, of the team. cabin fever. Yeah, basically, yeah, to alleviate some of the cabin fever. So we had a game night with just my my half of the team and spouses, and we found that we were introducing. I don't want to say party games per se, but we did play just one, and we played mm -hmm. so Clover, easy games that were not your straight up outburst type of games. Right. Um, but not a euro. But not euro. Yeah, we didn't. We did a lot of like. Um, Oh, Sheriff of Nottingham. Everybody loved King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo. Uh, the idea of, of, I mean, everybody understands rolling dice. I mean, it's it's your standard Yahtzee mechanism type of thing there. So those types of games I found that everybody really enjoyed. Now, we tried getting into Tiny Towns, and that one kind of boggled a few my. I think that burned a few brain cells out mm -hmm. of a couple of them. I just try to think of, like, evergreens that you're going to easily find at a store, like yes. at Target. Right. Yes. Or something like that. So, like, I'm thinking, like, Ticket to Ride. Yes. Yes. Catan. The, like, those are easy games that are, like, okay, 
I've heard about this game. I can mentally see it now. I can put it together. Mm-hmm. Or like um, we introduced Jackie's mom to um, some board games over the last couple of holidays now, mm-hmm. like Azul. Oh. It took her probably well, it was two. The chocolate. It was, it the, was chocolate the chocolate one because we had the chocolatier one. Yeah. But, still. but um, it was a holiday themed board yeah. game. So we, we started playing the first time like we had to help her out where to put the tiles at. And the second time like I had to help her count like her points and How stuff points, but yeah. i think the third game she was like yeah she was beating she us. was killing us we were like, <laughs> I was like oh crap I, a i'm just sitting here going i created another monster yes you did. i don't know but it like i think azul's probably like her favorite game we've played like just one with her so i'm trying to think of games yeah. like we've introduced your mom to mm-hmm. like um we've done like the harry potter deck builder game because she likes harry potter mm-hmm. so like themed games that like they will have an interest in so like yes. if they like marvel well, maybe Legendary might be a good one. Yeah. But the important part to me, I think even to Jackie, is play the game slowly. Mm-hmm. Don't yes. just go boom, 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 boom. Okay, there's a turn. And they're just like, I don't yeah. understand anything that just happened. Yes. Right. You have to go slowly. I find that when I'm teaching to new players, I almost, and I don't do it intentionally, but it happens, I sacrifice my own game yeah. because I'm so busy trying to watch to make sure that they are taking full advantage yeah, of their That's charts. what we call a good teach, is when yeah. the person who teaches it loses, <laughs> loses by a game. lot. So yes. I'll do that, but also I will be focusing on my, like I'll heavily focus on my game, and but I'll explain why I'm doing things. Yeah. Be like, mm-hmm. I'm going to take this here, and I'm going to put it there, and they're like, why'd you do that? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm doing this, because if I do this, this, and this, I get more points. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh. And that's <laughs> what got Kathy and Azul is because she was just like, she learned my strategy and then she just went for it and then it backfired on me really quickly. It usually does so, when you do that, yeah. I, I The same yeah. thing goes with like Splendor for you. Like you learn the strategy very quickly because like when we played together. Well, I you think didn't that was, teach me your strategy. Well, okay. But, I, made, I made my own yeah. and I've taught, since taught you my strategy and now you use my strategy. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, okay. <laughs> The truth we, gotta is re- out. we gotta rewrite the history. But like when when we played the first time, it was we were playing very quickly because we're yeah, used to playing the game so quickly it. and knowing yeah. what we're doing three turns ahead. Mm-hmm. We slowed the game down and then she was able to figure out exactly what she needed to do. And I mean that now she's got a lot of games that she's just flat out better than me. Like the game that we're <laughs> yeah, gonna talk I, about I, here in a little bit. I don't get to play yeah, with yeah, I think you just have to know your audience. Yes. And that's the that's biggest a, thing. That's the big, like, it's the same, like, you have to, yeah. And, like, e- like easy games. Like, we, we've done Quirkle and stuff with people. That's an easy, like, kind of intro to something. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, and then if they play a couple, you can be, like, do you like deck builders? Do you like cooperative? Do you like, I mean, like, it just depends on what they like. Summer Camp's another good, easy, like, yeah. deck builder. I was builder just that, thinking of that one. I think, like, taught a couple people. easy deck builders or, like, co-op games are good to get yes. them in because it, it gets their brain thinking about how to play the game they start thinking down yeah. those same avenues and then even like yeah. Corkle, yeah Corkle's yeah. a stupid easy game but yeah. it, on like just looking at it, it's like okay well, yeah you're just playing tiles down but like it's also making you think like oh i'm missing that color i need to find that color or, oh i got a pattern like you Corkle. actually have to do the strategy part and that's what gets their brain thinking yes and then once you get their brain thinking, they're actually able to play some of the more advanced games. Yeah. yeah. You have to build up to the advanced games. Yeah. You can't yeah. just dive right into them. Yeah, I think, you, you can't just dive into On Mars. Right. I no. think the, the, probably the easiest game to teach somebody to play, and that would be Suro. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> oh you basically say, all you got to do is stay on the board. Just lay a towel that won't put you off the board. And we figured, okay, this will be fun. And then the one person we taught it to, the first thing, okay, one we, of the people we, we taught took it to. We took it to though. a choir event. Eight choir kids sitting around the table. The very first tile played, mm-hmm. mind you. The, yeah, the very first tile he played basically put him on and right back off the board. It's like, it's like why okay, would you play Carl, that tile? Carl, th- th- take that tile back. <laughs> I knew exactly what you were talking about, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, yeah, so, yeah, because all you got to do is, like, you're going to place tiles and you're going to follow one of the lines that you're on to where the uh, tile ends. Yeah. And the whole point is to try and stay on the board by – but knock everybody else off the board Mm -hmm. by making their path go off the board it is harder than it sounds well yeah it's an easy game Mm -hmm. 
but the strategy of which tile you're going to play so you don't end up off the board yourself. Mm -hmm. And where do is you go to? One. Do you stay on the outside? Do you go straight for the center? Right. But then when you go to the center, now that's where everybody's going. So it's like, yep. do you just stay in and the And yeah, because you got to be careful because if you can. run head it first into somebody else, you, you're, you're both, both gone. Out. You're both gone. Yeah. Or you can run into their path that's going to, yeah. the, the, their other path on their other side of them is going to go right off the board. Yep. So yeah. It's a good one. I enjoy it's, that one. It's an easy game to, to uh, teach, easy game to play, but does have a lot of strategy in it. Yes. Yeah, it does. So. Okay. I, Mike, Hopefully that Mike, answered if you Mike's listen, question. If, if you actually listen to the podcast, I hopefully hope that, that answers the question. question. If not, Gave I guess I'll ideas. have to play it for you at work. Just clip it. <laughs> yeah, I'll clip it. Say, here's your answer, Mike. <laughs> so we're going to move on to our deep dive. Okay. This is for Earth. This is the game that we got right after. Where did we find this game? We played this at. We West played this at Dice Tower West. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Picked it up on the way back and had it. And then they introduced Justin and Jackie to it, and mm -hmm. now they're hooked on it. Well, we bought it because of your as is like talking about it, and then we're like, "Come teach this game to us." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we did. All right. So. Earth was produced by or published by Inside Up Games in 2023. It was designed by Max Maxime Maxime Tardif. I think that's how it's pronounced. Okay. All right. So Earth is an engine builder tableau builder uh, game where you are building out a four by four grid of cards. Uh, that is actually the rule that ends the game is when one person gets their last card down. Very simple rules, but tons of strategic possibilities. This game comes with well over 300 cards in it. Of, 365 yes, cards. And the expansion is going to ruin that number for yes, you, it isn't is. it? It's going to ruin um, it. But all of the cards represent different types of flora and fauna that are found here on Earth. Simple as that. There are also event cards that will gain you certain advantages one time, but may cost you points at the end of the game. All right, so throughout the game, there are one of four actions you can take. Everybody starts with an ecosystem card, an island card, and one climate card. These cards basically give you your outline strategy. One will tell you how many cards and how many soil you start the game with in your hand. The other two, one will give you end game scoring and one gives you in game bonuses. So throughout the game, there are four total actions that can be taken. Uh, each action is done by not only the person whose turn it is, but a lesser version of the action is also done by every other player at the table. Mm -hmm. The first action, you can add cards to your tableau. This is called the grow action. If you take the action, you get to plant two cards, you get to draw, essentially you draw four cards, keep one. Everybody else at the table can plant one card and just simply draw one card off the top of the deck. All right, so the second action is a soil action. Uh, the, if it's your turn, you can get five soil and then compost two cards out of the deck. I'll come back to what composting means. If it is not your action, you are one of the other players, then you get two soil or you can compost two cards straight from the deck. The third action, you can get six sprout cubes and two soil. If it is not your turn, you get to choose between two sprout cubes or two soil. The final action is essentially just gather, getting cards. You can draw four cards right off the top of the deck into your hand, plus get two of the growth pieces for your trees. If it is not your turn, you get to draw two cards or get two growth. So the different actions, obviously drawing cards into your hand is drawing cards into your hand. This just gives you more options in what you want to play down. Uh, composting. Composting cards means that you are taking one card either out of your hand or out off the top of the deck and turning it over and putting it on your board. These cards are 100% points at the end of the game. One for one, straight up points. Sp sprout cubes, some of the cards will have growth spots on them and there are two different types of growth that you can have on a card. One is the sprouts. These are just little green cubes that can be used to trade in for other things throughout the game or at the end of the game, again, straight up one for one points. The tree growth, there are little tree, tree stumps and tree canopies that you can also build out on cards that ask for them. 
if you do not complete the tree, if the tree is not fully grown, then you get one for one points for the pieces that are there. If you complete the tree, they are sometimes worth more. For instance, a tree that requires five pieces to be fully grown it will be worth six points, or a four-pointer might be worth five points, and so on. Um, soil is the money of the game. You have to have soil in order to put your cards down. Simple as that. And of course, like I said, putting your cards down is what ultimately wins you the game. Mm -hmm. Well, let me rephrase that. That's what ends the game. It's it does not game. necessarily make you win the you. game. <laughs> Winning the game is a combination of points from your, uh, your laid cards, from end game bonuses that come up from um, your, your compost, compost stack. Yep, your compost stack, your sprouts, your tree growth. Uh, your terrain cards, there are cards in the middle of the table that have bonuses. So as you are building out your tableau, there's going to be four cards in the middle of the table, the eco cards, that will, there are certain goals. Mm -hmm. Like one may say have six cards that have a growth of three or better on them, something like that. The first person to do it puts their one of their little tokens up there and they get points at the end of the game for it. Now, what I do like is there are two sides to this board. You can have the friendly side where everybody gets the same amount of points no matter when you got that goal accomplished. Or there's the flip side of the board where it is a scaled version of those points. The first player gets 15, the second 11, and so on. It just keeps going down depending on how long it took you to accomplish that goal. The One of the main things in this game, one of the things that makes this game work so nicely, one is the simultaneous action. Mm -hmm. Everybody is doing something at the same time. There is no downtime. There is no waiting your turn. Um, the only waiting is involved is getting to pick what you want to do versus following somebody else's action. However, after you've after each person has chosen their action, then everybody runs through their tableau and activates their tableau. So if I were to do the soil action, which is the orange action, then I would start at the very top of my tableau and work left to right, top to bottom, and activate every orange card on my board. Those orange cards may say, I get a free growth and to pull a new card. They may say, I can turn in a sprout to get a growth, or I can turn in a sprout to compost two cards from my hand. So there's a number of different actions on each of these cards, and each one of the four main actions, the green, orange, blue, and yellow all do different things so not only are you laying down you're getting the points off the cards you're getting the actions off of the three cards you start with but you're also getting the actions off of every card in your tableau at every turn that you've laid out that that color is activated mm -hmm. so there's a lot going on in this one yep. but at the same time you get through that first couple rounds and it's so simple well, why don't we talk about gameplay yes. here before you talk about everything? Well, no, I'm just going through the basic rules. So, okay. and that was again not by no means is that a a rule breakdown. No, it is a rule mm, overview. No. Okay, so I think the cool thing about this is trying to get your tableau to synergize with everything else that's yes. going on, uh, making sure you have cards in the right spot. Yeah, as because you're reading that tableau left to right, left to right. Top a, to what bottom, was, yeah. What was the other game? There's another game that we said that, that's a lot like this, depending on where your cards are at, is when they activate. Wingspan. Wingspan. Yep, yeah. that's right. I couldn't it's remember. Just, it's, it's been really a while since I played. It's wingspan. very similar to Wingspan. very yeah. similar to Wingspan, yeah. though. In but, that uh, sense. But just the puzzle of aligning the cards in your tableau mm -hmm. just to get them to work. Because sometimes, because you, you can pick which, when you do the action, whether you're going to use your um, the card on your player board yeah, the climate card gives you ongoing Yeah, so you, abilities. you can play either – you can do the power on that one mm -hmm. or you can do the power in your tableau in case something in your tableau, if it activates, it will make that climate card even right. better. However, if you do your tableau, you have to complete your right. tableau before you move That's what I'm saying. You have you to play your, your tableau yeah. and then you can go back to it. Yes. There are cards that are on there that are going to allow you to – if this card goes off before this card, this card's going to do that or mm -hmm. it, it's just – interesting how you can put them all in there together if you can you know, like line up getting one where it's like add a tree and then the next card is like remove a tree and uh -huh. gain like three cards yes, exactly. yes. Like those are nice because it's just like well i'm just gonna gain three cards yep i had ones that were if i paid a dirt 
Well, one, it was like you get three dirt because I think my yellow card was I got the, the climate card and I mm-hmm. got three dirt every time the yellow power went off. And then I had a bunch of them that would give let me uh, put cards into the compost by paying a dirt. Because the power I used the other night was I got I started with three cards. That was it. I had nothing in my compost, and I had four dirt. So it was like trying to balance it. Although I still I won that too. You did win that one by a landslide. Yes, I very much enjoyed trying to line up the tableau to make it work for you mm-hmm. in this one. Yeah, no, it's it's a good one. Um, it's one that I I really do like. I've yet to win, <laughs> but um, I really do like it. Uh, I feel like it's one of those games that, like, if you have ADHD, don't play it because you're going to forget a lot of things. Yeah, right. there's, there's so a, there's much a stuff lot going, on. going on. And I really like games times. where there's a lot going on at all times. Mm-hmm. And this one is so straightforward. It's like, all right, do this, do that. Do this, do that. Yeah. And I can't keep remembering, okay, I have to do that. I'm like, all right, I got to do this. Oh, crap, I forgot about this section. Oh, crap, I forgot about that action. Oh, crap, mm-hmm. I forgot about this one. Well, it's the just hard like, part oh is remembering God. the goals you have to go after. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, I forgot there's this other board up here. Yeah. Well, yeah crap, wait a minute, what was that downfall. goal? Do I have it yet? Yeah. <sighs> that's yeah. your downfall. That one's, that one's that's hard his to remember. downfall. Yeah, he's like, yeah. You it's, forget it, about the goals? It is. A, I mean, it is. It truly is a lot. And there's, like, no breaks. Like, with Wingspan, like, you you don't really go when any, somebody else is going. But with, with Earth, you are. Like, it's everybody's doing something at the same time. So you're, you have to sort of pay attention, yeah. like, to yeah. your own board I think that's constantly. also the hard part, too, is because it's like uh, another player is going. And they're like, all right, I'm doing this, this, and this. All right, I'm done. You're just like... Oh crap! Um, 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 yeah. Did I do everything? Okay. Well, who's the next? Pl- what are you doing next? Okay. Uh. Yeah. There's no downtime. Yeah. Which is yeah. It's a uh, what is that? I'm trying to say double edged sword. Basically. Yeah. It's nice, but mm-hmm. at the same time, it's super yeah. stressful. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of trust in this game to make sure it's like nobody they, else is cheating. Yeah. They are actually they actually getting right. that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna collect eighteen dirt. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to notice. Right. Right. The one thing I keep forgetting about is building that compost because that's points at the end of the game. Uh-huh. It's a point yeah. per card. Well, and you get to the end of the game, you think, uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I've got 18 cards in my compost. You look over and somebody 34. has half a dead yeah. in their compost. <laughs> yeah. It didn't yeah. help me this last round. No, it didn't. So, uh, no, and that was one of the things I was going to say is this is a super easy game to f- you filter through those cards so quickly. Mm-hmm. Because one of the actions lets you draw four cards. Mm-hmm. I think at one point, I think if if the what was it, the yellow action went off, I was pulling like eight cards from yeah, the deck yeah. every time because I had so many cards that gave me more cards. Mm-hmm. So then I had to start looking for ways to get them back out of my hand. Yeah, which is not hard to find. You mm-hmm. just do the compost action. But I like the I like deck builders, and it's not really even a deck builder by any stretch. It's a hand management. But I like the hand management games that give you a way to cycle through the deck to look for those cards you're looking for without – that give you a way to get rid of them again and yeah. give you a good way to use them. Mm-hmm. I can't use them in my tableau. This isn't the symbols I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, instead of just discarding it, you yeah. can get them into your – You get them into the compost the pile. Compost, They're still yeah. good. They're points. But you got to have cards that can do – I mean, there right. it, there is the one power that allows you to pull cards out of the main deck mm-hmm. to put them in there. But not out of your but hand. But not out of your hand. So you got to get cards that actually do that. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Um, I think another thing in the game, though, is what's hard is that you, especially in your first set of cards, you want to build everything in your hand. Yes. And it's like going. You can't. Especially, it, like, at the beginning, you got all the, you get all these cards, and then it tells you, well, you can keep three of them out of the eight cards you just got. And I'm going. Which ones? Which ones do I get rid of? Yeah. That one I think is kind of like uh, terraforming Mars. Like I have all these great cards, but I also don't want to keep all these cards Mm -hmm. because I need to get these out of my hand also. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Terraforming Mars is harder to get them out of your hand. This one, this one is like wingspan meets terraforming Mars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a way. This one's compared to Arc Nova a lot too because Mm -hmm. I haven't played that one. Oh, we need to play that one. I, I feel like also in this game, like once you get the hang of it it's like you're doing the same thing but that's where the achievement sheet comes in which we keep track of on how you win (laughs) yeah that is cool uh, it gives you different goals in mind like you're like okay i want to get on the sheet i need to do this Mm -hmm. so like we've kept track like the first achievement is win the first game which you guys taught us and 
Dad won, but he yeah. cheated. But um, I, I, oh. the second time we played, which uh, was a couple days later, Jackie won without completing her tableau. So that was an achievement. Uh, and the last time we played, she completed three achievements on the same win. Uh, win <laughs> while having played zero events. Win with thirty victory po- uh, Win with under thirty victory points from ecosystems, and win with oh. th- under thirty v- base VP. So that's where you have to go very heavy into one strategy. Wow. Yeah. So there's yeah. there's a lot of different ones. Like I, there's one yeah. that it's win with uh, more than thirty cards in your hand at the end of the game, and win with zero cards in your oh hand at the end goodness. of the game. I yeah. The last time we played, I wow. got lucky because I had pulled cards that were like, if you had like a certain type of card, like whatever the symbols are, like there's like a mushroom one. There's like mm-hmm. a, and it was like a three in the row. Well, I had one already started in a row. So I put that card and then I put two more on there. So that's automatically what nine points, yeah. three, three points oh, per wow. card. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like that's the, I had like two of them like that. And then the, the other time we played, it was the same thing. I had one that was like, you get like four points. It was like for every mushroom card. It was a lot of points. So, wow. I mean, I don't know. It's you just have to know how to play and what to play. Like, I, but I did have one in the last game where it was like you needed the cards that had less than three of the sprout things mm-hmm. on them, mm-hmm. and those are hard to pick. Like, you, I mean, you can't. It's like three or less. But I, I mean, I only picked up maybe four the whole game. I mean, it wasn't. I feel like, like most of the no cards way. I pick up are like a one or two sprouts on it, yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, that was. I nothing. had a, I had a card. It was the very first card that I played. It cost me nothing to put down, and it scored me 27 points at the end of the game. Because it was, it got three points per mushroom that was orthogonal around it. Around yeah. it, and then we also had a card in game scoring card or whatever. What, those mm-hmm. are the uh, um, what are those called? The anyway, the fauna board, the fauna cards. <clears throat> the fauna cards. I scored fifteen points on that for four or more mushrooms on your board, and I had that done in like yeah three rounds. He cheats. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, that, is, that is the, the I find a goal. I focus on that first goal and go and then uh-huh. yeah. go to the next one. It's like, okay, yeah, what do yeah. I need to get to there? Here lately on Tableau he Builders, he's been knocking me out of the water. Yeah. I just, I can't yeah, seem to win system, one. That's system, apparently. I guess. I don't know. She can't play uh, Apier either. <sighs> yeah, we know. I think the last podcast I was on, you guys talked about the same thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's on our... Uh, Apier. The... Our on the road video too. We played it down there, and I just I annihilated them. Mm-hmm. I was I almost lapped them. Pretty much, yeah. Anyway, <coughs> all right. So, anyway. um, okay, components. The components in this one, I don't like the growth because the growth they're the trees? easy to fall over. Yeah, that is an unfortunate. I think if they were more like Lego ish. Well, the same thing we say about um, rolling heights. Rolling too. heights is horrible. I think the growth, there's... It's a little... They give you too many. Yeah, there's a lot. And then also, like, the different colors make absolutely no sense. No, they're not supposed to. They're just supposed to be variety. And maybe, like, I know, like, there's a color for literally each player. Mm -hmm. Maybe just take your color and that's your... You're that color instead for the growth, but... I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like the variety. It's interesting. I try um, to mix them up. I have multiple different kinds of trees. The yeah. growth piece, like, you got growth pieces that kind of remind me of, like, um, te- uh, Takenoko. 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 And then you got the little cubes for the, the sprouts. Uh, the sprouts. The sprouts. Yeah. And then you got little cardboard dirt pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Kickstarter had the upgraded wooden pieces. Uh, do they look like little poop emojis? They absolutely look like little <laughs> That would have been amazing. That would have been great. Mm-hmm. Or you do can, like you can do brown those. cubes instead, yeah, something. like mm-hmm. something yeah. different other than cardboard pieces. Well, like, cardboard pieces, yeah. This has a new uh, expansion. That it does have an expansion. Up, is it finished up? On it is finished up already. Right. Yes. But the uh, growth cubes now have like the leaf symbol you see on everything for points. No, it's on the top the growth, of the, the sprouts. The sprouts, yes, the sprouts have, have the, the leaf, leaf symbol, symbol on. up on top that stands up. So I'm yeah. hoping that, that that's not easily I feel like, broken. I feel like all the games have that one piece and it's like we got all of these great pe- uh, pieces uh-huh. except for this one little cardboard we piece we ran out of money here so you get cardboard yeah, like like in like the collab, collab where like all of the resources had really cool looking pieces and then the wild was just a little cardboard piece mm-hmm. like what yeah but, yeah. The, but the expansion the new expansion actually comes with the, the, the growth to, uh, pieces trees. that look like trees they actually look like the trunks of the trees okay. and then the toppers actually look like tree toppers okay. yeah. so it looks a lot cooler so we'll see 
I spent way too much money on that expansion, so we'll <laughs> we'll see what happens. Because you know, yeah. I do like a good neoprene mat. Yeah. The other thing in this game is those event cards. The event mm -hmm. cards are hit or miss. Um, I have a question on those. Are those when you draw them, you play them immediately? No. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, you can play those at any they time. They can oh, be played okay. at any time, they... even on somebody else's turn. Okay. Yep. They essentially give you resources. The idea is they give yeah. you more resources. Problem is, some of them cost you points at the yeah. end of the game. Yeah. They may cost you a resource to get something else. It just depends on the card. But they, the majority of them end up costing you points. You give up a point or two at the end of the game mm -hmm. for using them. Yeah, it's like winning the lottery, but you end up you sold your soul yeah. to win the lottery. So Not quite that extreme, but sure. It can be in a close game. Oh, maybe. It's like, look, I'm ahead by two points. Oh, this card took three points from me. <laughs> but I got a lot of stuff during the game. Yeah. All yeah. right, so any other thoughts? Um, About the gameplay? Well, gameplay or... or I do like, or? this is another one of those games though. the artwork is, <gasps> the it, artwork the, these are actual is, photographs, it's yes. not actual, it's not art. Well, no. I guess photographing, photography Photograph is, is art, considered but art, but it is photography, not drawings. not drawings. But, and a lot of people have problems with actual. I don't have a problem with that. Photographs on cards and as artwork in games. I think because of the nature of the game. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. This works <laughs> with those just like Art Nova does. Yeah. I think there, in certain circumstances, yes. It, I think art, the photography as artwork is fine. Mm -hmm. um, I think that because of the subject of the game, I think it's a perfectly acceptable. I think most of these cards are absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, Terraforming Mars in that way. I mean, right? Because yeah. Terraforming Mars are pictures too. A lot of them, yes. And a that's lot where, of them that's are, where but actually, there are some artwork on those. Terraforming yeah. Mars is where the, the artwork on cards, or the photography on cards came from, because how do you know what that's supposed to yeah. look like? Now, you said that's in the new fair. Kickstarter, too, that the, the player boards are... I, had, I thought I'd read the boards. neoprene mats were the player boards as well. I was trying to pull that up and see. I'm hoping okay. so. But so. in the uh, um, the new expansion, though, there are there's a seed re uh, resource yes. now where... You can uh, transform them into sprouts, soil, growth, or you can do it for compost. Mm -hmm. But it's an, it's going to be played like with the way the dirt is played. No. Um, <laughs> like the new sprouts, they have... What was the other thing also I seen? Also makes it a six-player game. Yeah, it makes mm -hmm. it a six-player game. Which is not going to increase the length at all, because you're still no, doing actions you still, all the time. Yeah, you're still it's doing It's going to take up some serious table space, though. Yeah. No, oh, there was a new action, germa germination. germination. Yeah. This is one of those games I feel like the more people, the quicker the game. Mm -hmm. Because you're getting more actions in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. You're playing more cards. Player, it's, we, it's longer. It's longer. Yeah. Not by much, but no, it yeah, is longer. Yeah, it's not by much. Well, and you just don't have as much resources and stuff because yeah. you don't have as many... Which usually in games where you add people, it makes the game longer. Yeah, I feel like this every time we play, no. half the time we're trying to get dirt because we can't afford anything because yeah. we don't have two other <laughs> turns to get dirt with. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing I would say. Yeah, yeah I don't. Find it's not. A, it's not a bad two-player though. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's a good two-player game. All right, so yeah. we've covered the artwork. Nope. Um, yep, they do come with it. That's what right I thought. There. That's what I thought. Okay. They're in with the box with all the other the the tableaus. Okay. Um, all right, so we've covered artwork. I love the artwork on the box. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. It's actually a – because the artwork on the box is actually an art. It's a drawing, isn't yes. it? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think so. Well, I mean, you're oh, using I'm, it as I'm a laptop s holder, I'm so. <laughs> yeah, my well, laptop I, they is sitting did, on top of it. I think they did re uh, research that. <laughs> it is a real place. Though. Yes, it's it in was in Iceland. Iceland, yeah. It's a real location in Iceland. Mm -hmm. It looks like oh. a way out of the way place in mm -hmm. Iceland. It's beautiful, right. though. So All right. That would be gameplay. That would be gameplay, art, so, components. Final thoughts? Who wants to go first? Are we rating this? One through five or whatever your score yeah, is? Yeah, we will. Yes. But that, uh, your final thoughts. Oh, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Well, I like I do it. do that with the ratings. So. You do that with your ratings. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Do okay. you want to go first? <laughs> I suppose. Can okay. you remind us of the rating scale? Yeah, I don't Yes. Know. We have a ranking scale of a 1 to 5. So num 1 is don't bother with the game. Number 3, it's a good game, but you probably want to buy it or play it before you buy it. And a 5 is you recommend it. Go ahead and buy it. 
<laughs> All right. So final thoughts. I absolutely adore this game. I will play it anytime somebody wants to. I love reading some of the facts on the cards. Um, I think it's very interesting. Uh, the fact that every card is different is is fun for me. I enjoy the trivia. Or not, not even really trivia. It's more like fun facts they put on the cards. Um, and I like making the synergy work. Even if it never works for me, I enjoy trying to make it work. Yeah, you have trouble with I with have that. not even gonna lie. I'm so stressed in this game. I don't even read the fun facts. I didn't yeah, even know there were fun I've facts on the cards read until read just the now. Fun facts. <laughs> well, no, I've read some of them. <laughs> yeah, there's little stuff at the very bottom. Yeah, I see it's, that it's now, it's like looking fun. at yeah, the rule book. Super, yeah. yeah, it's a little yeah. If you're but not they're at you, really you interesting. Like in Wingspan, facts. I have plenty of time to read all of the fun facts, and maybe that's just me getting older and my now obsession with birds. But um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't even looked at the fun facts on these. Well, you need to look at some nice. of the fun facts. They are very, very interesting. But yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy this one. Like I said, I will sit down and play it any time. Um, I'm going to rate this one probably, gosh, I would almost say a 4.5. I mean, I absolutely adore this game. I guess I'll go next. Yes. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> I, 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 it's I, your podcast. Right? I mean, well, no. I can let the guests go. Good. But I, I'm going to rate it. Uh, well, I ain't going to say what I'm rating it yet. Oh. But I do like the game. I really like the game, actually. Even though the first time I played it, it was about halfway through the game before I understand what in the world was going on. He got slaughtered on the first game we played. Yeah, because for some reason I zoned out completely during the rules teach, and I noticed there was cards in the middle of the board that they kept looking at. I was like, what are these cards? What are they looking at? <laughs> oh, like the, the okay. Board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the gold yeah. cards. All the gold cards. And I'm like going, what are these? That's what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I got I got killed. I it was like a 50-point difference oh, it was between probably, first and sec- uh, last. Uh, it was more than that, yeah. But I still had fun after trying to catch up and failed miserably, <laughs> though. But the more I've played it, the more I've liked it. Yeah. And the fact that we've played this probably five times, almost six times now. At least, yeah. I believe what it was. And I'm still seeing cards that I have not seen yeah. yet. Because there's so many cards to get out there, though. Well, I think it helps is that because... You're drawing like four cards, but only keeping one, so you're discarding three, so yeah. you're not right. really playing that card. Right, yeah. right. The other person's not seeing that card, and then you got all the cards you're just pulling right off the deck and right into your compost. Yes. Right. Yep. So it's so there's a lot of cards so, you yeah. don't and, see. And now that with the expansion coming out, it's going to add even more cards to it, so yeah. there's still going to be more replayability. Even though you're doing pretty much the same thing in the game, it is still it still feels the fauna enough. board helps. Yes. change that it's because and, the goals change up yep. every turn, and the fauna cards are all double sided even. Yeah. So yeah. So you have a lot and of And the expansion options. bringing out like 30 more fauna cards. Yeah. So there's, there's and they're double-sided. And then when you get really bored, just play the achievement sheet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we did so that I am actually going to give this game a five. Oh, man. I've not I given so a game yet a that five, I know yeah. of a five yet. But this yeah. one, yeah, I would. this was one of those that I would play anytime. I Yeah, I would highly recommend this one. No, if it was a, between, do you want to play Earth or do you want to play Firefly? Well, of course I'm playing Firefly first, but. So in other words, this would 4. be a close 9. second. Four point nine nine. Four point nine 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 nine. Okay. Oh, yeah. You go ahead. Okay. Um, I do like this game. I know I've said many a times it's very stressful, but um, yeah, just slow it down. Like, there's no reason why you have to complete this game no. as quickly as possible. Slow it down. Take your time on it. Actually, read the cards. Tell people to wait. And read just, the fun facts. Yeah, well, yeah. But uh, actually play your full turn. Um, I don't think I've ever played this game where I've actually played my full turn once. So um, I'm, I'm still getting there. But I, I do like the game. I like the artwork. I like, I mean, we bought the game and then learned how to play it. So just by you guys saying, yeah, this is a really good game, I think once. So we looked at it at the board game store. I think it was like 50 bucks. It's not even expensive. That's the thing. I don't so think it was even 50 bucks. It, it, it might have been like 40, 40 or 45 so it's not deal. like it's an expensive game. It's yeah. relatively cheap for what you're actually Didn't getting we, out of it. We bought it at Moonshot, didn't we? Yeah, we bought yeah. it at Moonshot Games. Shout out. Um, <laughs> sponsor, sponsor them. <laughs> sponsor this podcast. Tag them in this. <laughs> if you're still listening, sponsor. Um, yeah, so I mean, we, we bought it. And then I think literally like that weekend, I feel like you guys came over and taught us how to play the game. Yeah, then, yeah it didn't take much arm twisting to get us to come over and play this one. It never one. does. No. Like we were like, hey, we were like, oh man, what are we going to make for dinner? You want to play board games with your parents? 
That's not that's you also though. You're like uh. the only time we've ever been told no is when you guys already have plans. Yeah. Like oh, <laughs> sorry, we got more people to go see. But no, it, it's good. I I would give it a four, a solid four point five. Okay. Oh, okay. Now it's your turn. It would get the extra point five if I could win. Oh well, you that see, has nothing to do with. That's the reason why does not get the extra. That has something to do with how you. That has nothing to do with. I can't win. The game, the game I can't itself. Win, so I don't that's like it. you. Yeah, that's a me problem, right? Oh, there's plenty of games that I don't like that because I can't win it. Oh, there, we have oh, a whole yeah, shelf of games. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a lot of games we are not allowed to play anymore because Justin's like, I don't like to play. It's like, oh, Jackie's not in a great mood. Um, let's play this game. Yeah, because <laughs> she can beat you at it. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not very many. You did pull out Duel the other day, which I was shocked when I you won. did. Yeah, and you won, which was shocking also. We actually, that's one of the games we keep track of all of our scorecards yeah, and date them. them. Yeah, we have all of them, yeah. Duel? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we actually date them to see, we go back, like, all right, who's on, how big of a winning streak do We didn't play it for over a year. It would go, like, point. a year in between yeah. games. <laughs> like, I would beat Justin, yeah, anyways. Mm. Back to Earth, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think it, it's a good game. I would give it a 3.75 because I think you have to really like Tableau games. Is that what you, mm-hmm. how you can say Tableau it? Tableau yeah. Builders, yes. Yeah, because I think if you don't know those games or play those games, like you're like that, it's a lot. Like, I'm not – I didn't think I was a Tableau thing, but then you were like, I think you are actually a Tableau I player. I think you are. Which is different because I like deck building and co- cooperative. It's kind of like so. I mean, it's a deck builder in front of you. Yeah, it is. No, so. it's not, it's not. Yeah, it is. I it's good. I think it's not. It's honestly, if you're if you're looking at wingspan or earth, I would almost do earth first because it's slightly easier. I think because mm-hmm. wingspan is like oh, kind of complicated. There's also more like turns, I guess, or like there's more there's more options or whatever. You have well, you lose a turn every. Yeah, time, but a little yeah. more complication. There. Yeah, I think if you if you haven't played Wingspan and you want to get into these, I would get Earth first. Wingspan's one of those that like if you don't get the cards going right. Yeah, quickly, you're, you're kind of Wingspan you're kind is of yeah. harder to cycle through the cards, whereas yeah. this one you yeah. cycle through so many cards, it's awesome. Yeah. This is what's termed as a hand management because you're oh, okay. managing what's happening. It's not a deck building. You're always drawing it's cards in Earth. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. somebody's yeah. always making yeah. you draw a card. That's yes. a thing. So well, so and like there is cool like when you can do your own compost or compost mm-hmm. bat or whatever. Like it's that is or compost from your hand and then compost from the deck. Those are that is a nice mechanic, especially if you like are sucking. <laughs> Because sometimes it's like you just need to do that. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think the first time we played it, I ended up trying to get more composted to my stuff because I was like, I don't think I'm going to win this. That's but, an easy way to get yeah. garner points. It's, but it's nice. Mm-hmm. It's it, I, I liked it better with the mat, too. Mm-hmm. Playing without the mat is a little bit more annoying in my opinion yeah it's possible but it yeah, is it I, is but I, it's just it's yeah. a little bit more annoying like we said, had to like move we had to like reconfigure how we were playing because well we, we just, also played on this table yeah, too and we learned well. very quickly that yeah. you it's really difficult yeah yeah it's this is a very narrow no. table yeah. it's good I mean, it's yeah a, it's a 3.75 for me Okay. That low. I like it. I like it. It's not that. But I'm thinking if somebody who has never played this and is listening to this and is like, should I buy it? I'm thinking it from that lens. Like you have to. So you're like saying these buy types it of before games. or play, play it before, before you buy, buy it. it. I still 3.75. So yeah. you can come. Maybe if you buy know it. you like this type of game, then yeah, I would buy it. But if you've yeah. never played a game like this, I yeah. would okay. try to play That's it fair. before. That's totally fair. fair. Totally fair. Saying. Yeah. As the newest player in the group, <laughs> if it's at a really totally good fair. price, go ahead and buy it. Yeah. But I would say I would say if you could find it for. Fifty uh, bucks or less. Yeah. Other than that, it. play it first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Unless you're used to spending fifty dollars on games yeah. all the time. Yeah. You're right. So that's going to do it for episode sixty-five. What's dropped to the YouTube channel since the last podcast? Episode fifty-two and fifty-three of Playing Through Our Collection is down on the road. Ratchet Con is coming up. That is all about our trip to West to Virginia to, Virginia. to play games with Jeff at his cabin. Some tables up to about Jeff. We have a top 10 two-player game only now released. Uh, watch them, like them, comment them. We'll be recording episodes 54 and 55 playing through our collection, covering the last of the M's. We also have a top 10 worker placement and a game playthrough of a recently released game of Sand. That's what's coming to the channel. But in the meantime, please go to iTunes and Spotify and give us a five-star rating and a review to help other people find the podcast. And why only a five-star? Do you know why? Because you can't give us a six. Justin and Jackie, how can people find your guys' podcast? Or anything on social media? 
Oh, uh, for fantasy, at O-U-S-F-F-P-O-D. Everywhere. And O-U-S-F-F-P-O-D dot com. We have Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. That's it. At Two Tired Therapist, but T-W-O Therapist. Two Tired Therapist. Like... Two. Yeah, two isn't the number. The number two. There yeah, are two yeah, tired therapists. Not T-O-O, but T-W-O. We'll put those links in. Timeline rewatch is not on like anything, so I don't use social media for that. <laughs> okay. It's all word of Also, if you want to keep up with us and see what we're doing, you can follow us on social media. Just follow the links in the show notes. There you'll find links to Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, Threads, and our merch shop. Or you can contact us directly at mutualsocietyatmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you at the next one. We have a top two player, a top, I knew I'd do that again. I told you I'd I, I top two top ten two, player. Top two <laughs> ten player game. Because, you know, there's not very many of those. So I can only come up All with three two. of them. So, I have never had that much trouble trying to say that at the end of the show.